How's it going, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the James Loud Podcast. Today, my special guests are Don and Aaron from DNA Genetics. How are you guys doing? Great. What's you, up? Brother? Thanks for having us. Thanks for coming on, man. We got some history. We've oh, known yes. each other for a long time. Long time. We know a lot of people that we you know, a lot it's of a small mutual, world, small yeah, world, for mutual sure. friends. Yeah, cannabis cups, all kinds of stuff. We were all in the tours together with all the cups. In the trenches, bro. Yeah. We were in the trenches together. Doing it before it was cool to do. <sighs> for sure. Well, you guys were kind of the first. You guys were the inspiration, more or less, for most of the Americans to come over to Amsterdam and like potentially start a seed company. I know you guys were one of the reasons that we went over as Loud Seeds was because of you guys. You guys kind of put the, the footwork down. You guys kind of showed everybody how it's done and- you know, really impressive. So I want to hear your story today from the beginning of how you guys got into cannabis, how you got over to Amsterdam, all that good stuff. So let's start with uh, Don and how you got involved with cannabis and, you know, how it evolved. Uh, yeah, I mean, I started smoking weed when I was young. And uh, for me, it was mostly my mom was, was smoked a lot of weed and she, she used it medicinally before there was medical. And so growing up, I was always around. It was always just, you know, she was always smoking in the living room and didn't really hide it or anything. And then later as it progressed into the medical world and whatever, she was totally uh, a, a, not just an advocate, but a patient, you know what I mean? And that was the thing right. that helped. I watched how much it helped her. And uh, this is like late eighties, early nineties or yep, nice. early nineties. Um, and, and basically, um, you know, it helped her through a lot of stuff and there was no way to convince me that there was something negative connected to it, regardless of the laws totally. based on the personal experience. Was she mm -hmm. smoking good weed back then? I mean, she was back then she was smoking whatever she can get, but right. you know, in the this late California, 80s, in LA, California yeah. in yeah, Riverside. <clears throat> yeah. Riverside. Yeah. You know, she was smoking whatever my dad was getting at the time. But then as we got older and started, you know, doing things ourselves. I supported her for years. She passed away, obviously, or not obviously, but she's passed away since then. And, and it always helped her even till, till she passed. So for me, that part of it was, I had this instant connection. Um, but how I got involved with, with Aaron was I moved to LA from Riverside mm. and I didn't know anyone. Right. Right. And so literally I was dating this girl. I was like, you have a girlfriend that's from LA. See if she knows anybody who can score a bag of weed. I don't want to drive an hour and a half to Riverside right now. And I got no hookups. Right. And literally that's what happened. And the person that came over to the house to hook it up was Aaron. Oh, wow. And he showed up. I had a dirty ass bong. He was like <laughs> talking shit. The dirtiest. <laughs> no, dirt. It was like, <laughs> have you ever seen like, if you try to blow a bubble into oil and watch it pop? Yeah. And so it'll bubble up, boom, 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 it'll go slow. <laughs> That's how it was. It was like La Brea Tar Pits filled with just ash and <laughs> and fucking crud in the fucking, it was nasty, bro. I didn't have a reason to clean it. Let's just, let's right. just say. The weed wasn't good it, enough it to It wasn't to like, to you know, it. and I was in this transitional phase where it wasn't like I had all my shit together, right? So, you know. I think the second time I came over, I brought a bottle for Formula 420. <laughs> well, so and, this had to be like. Almost got it. Almost good. So this was like late 90s, this 97, was, 98? Yeah, this, this is, is in, late the, 90s. in the late 90s. Yeah. Nice. And then, yeah, that it was like 97, 98, because the only reason why I know it was around that time is because uh, I judged the Cannabis Cup in Amsterdam in 98. Oh, wow. And that was the first time I'd ever gone to Amsterdam. And my whole thing was, you know, that was that was legit. That was the, like, everything that everybody was doing anywhere else was whatever, you right. know, it was in high times. It was whatever, but Amsterdam was where people were like pro. You right. Were, you were going. That's pro. where it was at in the beginning. It well, was shit yeah. happening there. That's, well, in the, in the well, that's what you, that's what, you're, the that's yeah. what you think because you know, you're reading high times magazine. You're seeing all the Amsterdam totally. stuff. And yeah. Then, Ariane with and long then hair there, and high yeah. times. And then magazine. you get yeah. there, you're right. Cool. And I'm like, Oh, we can crush it over here. Yeah. You know? And that, but like, well, the flower's we on might, a different level, right? Uh, so, the what you in California is on a different it, level, bro. Still is, still is. Still but is. Like, yep. you know, you have the Spanish weed coming into Amsterdam, calling it California, right? It's selling it for good, but like, all right. So, keep going, Don. I don't well, know. No, no. So, ninety eight, I judge, I judge the cup. Uh, came back to from from Amsterdam. Was like, this is the fucking. 
best shit ever. Did you guys go there together? Or no, you were solo. I went. I went solo. Yeah. I went and and judged it just to judge. I bought a. I didn't. I wasn't some. You bought fucking, a judge's kit. I bought kit. a judge's kit for two hundred bucks. Yeah. And I went and I went down the coffee shop crawl and I met all the people, but I wasn't like Don from in the industry or anything at yeah. all. Just some. Fan, you just of went to the experience industry. it. Like, just yeah. a fan of weed. That's I great. met Tony from Sagamoth. I remember talking to him totally. for for a while and like like picking his brain and like met Soma. I met you know just yeah, come, yeah. you know the people that I, you you ended up linking up with later. But we ended up renting Tony's from Sagamoth's shop from him years later. But yeah, uh, in full circle. But so when I came back from Amsterdam, it was like they have a lot of haze and a lot of really bomb hash, all these exotic For hashes sure. I'd never been able to smoke before. But to be honest, like we had them with the weed. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. the Cali weed was just super superior. It was just on another level. Completely. Always was. And, 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 and still is like you said. And so when I came back from Amsterdam, it was like, fuck bro, you know, we, we could crush it. We could crush it. And it took a few years. But I don't even think I was to, to, to get us to, to, to get I'd to the go court. back every year, right? Yeah. I judged every year and I'd go back. And even a couple of times he, he had a ticket and ended up didn't not go in. He got like, a ticket and didn't go. I think it was to Jamaica. I didn't go. But we were yeah. planning like, place, several, several times to go and it just never, never, never panned out right. you know, for us to go. And uh, we ended up going. Yeah. We, we had a, fr- you know what? We had a, fr- a friend of ours in LA and he had this job. Uh, in Denmark to, to faux finish a house. Right? Yeah. That was the story. And, and he wants some help. He's like, you guys want to help us? Right. You want to help? You guys want to help me? And uh, get out of the States. You know, the, the Twin Towers had come down. Everybody was all like fucking, the political thing was all crazy with Bush and this. And, and it was like, you know, well, let's just get out of here. You know, and he fuck all the bullshit. You know, I was a plumber. Aaron was a builder. He was in construction and we both just quit our jobs. Right. And uh, I wasn't really such a builder. Well, not a bit. You were a helper. I mean, I heard stories. Uh, <laughs> you know. Good stories. I know. Yeah. I know. Like, I so sold you, weed, bro. Yeah. You're a hustler. And, and, and at that time of my life, it was, you know, it, it was, I dropped everything I owned and, and, and had to vanish. Yeah. And I ended up working for my buddy, right? Because I wasn't bringing in weed money. Mm-hmm. I was van- I just vanished, and right. I helped him on construction, doing construction shit, and finished jobs. And then I was staying at his house also, and I was helping him right with his work too, because I was you know I was in hiding. Yeah, so you're in hiding, and so so let's dive it back back a couple of years before that. You started smoking late eighties, early nineties too. I assume. Oh yeah. I sp- Crushing like and good LA weed. Old. Yeah, it was good LA weed. And then there was a period of time where it was like swaggy weed. Yeah. And then it was good weed. And back and when there was real droughts, where there was times where it would be really hard. I, you know, it was just a certain period of life, like, yeah. you know, like the junior high, high school, right in that area was like to find good weed. It was, it was hard to find, you know, for some people. Right. And we come across it and, it, you know, or otherwise it would be street weed and with seeds and. Oh yeah. The bammer. We call yeah. it bammer brown weed. I'm getting my homie a pound of the seeded weed right now. With 400 bucks a pound, which Cheaper is more than ex- that. We used to, I, I think it was $400 a pound in the nineties when I, I, as far as the stuff that I saw. And you know, there, there was outdoor in California that was going for less than 400 last year. Really fucking oh, crazy. Yeah. And then, and it's not seeded and it's not brick. Uh uh-uh. I know. So it's like. Might not be that good. It might be sprayed with pesticides, but it's. Who knows about what the stuff they put in, you know, back in the day. Oh, yeah. I used to get Max in Riverside before I moved to, to L.A. Yeah. And I would get it for like 250 a pound and I would flip it for, oh, four, wow. for four. Yeah. And that was so then because I had I had the hookups with these other group of people that were bringing it in. And so mm-hmm. then it was on the family Right, the family price. So that four hundred price was the price. That was the normal price. Yeah, that was the hookup price. It still had sure. seeds. It still had banana or uh, orange peel. It would get you shit. high though. Like that stuff Too would high? get you really high. It would give you a headache high sometimes. You know, it's like and you know there was no microdosing anything back in the day with weed. You would smoke and you'd smoke a bunch. You get fucking ripped. Like the bammer would give you a headache. That's why I like smoking better stuff for sure. 
was the effect. Like, oh yeah, the taste tasted better, smelled it, better, everything, everything about it. You know, you looked better. It's green. Yeah, yeah, back then it was green weed. And if there was purple, if there was any yeah, purple, nah. it would be like, yeah, wow. I mean, it like was rare red to hair, see anything. Red, Mexican, red hair, red hair. Yeah, where it's all completely red hair with no crystals on it. And most of that stuff was all pressed. It was all smashed. Into and there was like, you get brick. Colombian, right? So there was like <laughs> that Colombian that we, we get, but most of it was Mexican. I would, yeah, yeah most of it would be Mexican. Yeah. Then there was a period where I would get like uh, tie sticks. Yeah, you know, for sure, and that shit was like narcotic to with me. the fucking rap. Yeah, actual, it was, yeah. It was string wrapped. To me, yeah. it, it was very narcotic y. Yeah, for you sure. Know? That like, stuff that would, would put you down, bro. You don't make like you make some fucking brownies with that shit. It would it would take people out. It would take yeah. people out. Psychedelic weed. Yeah, but so like we, I've been around weed since I was a little kid. Yeah, and uh, you know, I'd say in junior high, you know, junior high, you're smoking weed. You're throwing seeds out the window. You're, you're, you know, the seeds are all germinating. Your buddies are coming to your window. Like, dude, you know, you got a pot plant right here. And like, Shh. yeah, bro. Yeah. I've been throwing seeds out the window, bro. You know, like, <laughs> and then they're coming by and stealing the leaves. Cause they don't know the plants. Totally. Like, we, we all didn't know shit. Right. You know? We're all, but we're all reading High Times, looking fucking pictures. Getting excited. High Times was the way to get excited back in the day. Before uh, there was the internet was and all that way. stuff. That was, that was the, the one. Way. Like, I still have my High Times issues from yep. back when uh, I was a kid. Do I. I don't have so, much, but I, I, I think I might, maybe I have, like, one little snippet I took out of a High Times. I love the fucking, uh, who was Humble Yap that was right near us? Uh, not the Flying Dutchman. Um, uh, right across. Uh, home, home fantasies. homegrown fantasies. Yeah. yeah, they made this cool advertisement with the seed. Like it was, yeah. And I always remember that, you know, like, and I kept that fucking little thing. I don't know if I still have it because everything was lost in the fire. But like, right. High times went through a different stages though. Many right? stages, so like, right? The they 80s, were the original still. Though. Yeah, it was all counterculture. So like, I have magazines from the eighties that was like all coke and ecstasy and all about like there's weed stuff in it too but it was mm -hmm. more just about the counterculture right. what's going on this and like kind of like giving it and then it went weed and mm -hmm. then it went to like no pictures of weed but just like a bunch of articles about stuff nobody wanted to read and then it went back to weed you know right. what i mean it went through all these weird totally changes. went through weird yeah. phases and the cups went through weird phases too yeah the hager sure. phases in the beginning yeah and then, yeah, and then they came to the States, and that was like a And that was the game. end of the Cannabis Cup. That was the end of the- Yeah, there was, I mean, I think 2012, 2014 were like, they did, it was fun. Like, those were some fun where there was a bunch of them back to well, back. Well, there, there was like one in California. There was yeah, one there was in the, Denver. Well, well, there was LA and San Francisco, right? Because right. there was the LA, and then there was the San Francisco one in 2010 was the first in the States. Yeah, we were, I was yeah. there, I was there with Crockett. Yeah. So we were there- in L.A. when they did the first one in L.A. Yeah. So let's take a step back to when you guys got over to Amsterdam. How did how did 2003. Well, we ended up. So we went over to Europe for this faux finishing thing. Right. Right. Which didn't turn into anything because the dude that was just bullshitting us. Right. So we we thought it was real. Yeah. We ended up in fucking in Spain. We took a trip. In Liège, Belgium. No, no. no. We, we wow. started. We, where did we land? France. We landed in Paris. In Paris, took a train to Liège, Belgium. We were supposed yeah. to meet. Minus 18 outside. Mm -hmm. Our friend at this train station. Yeah. yeah. And, the, and, and the dude Doesn't flaked, but we had this dude's number and we called this dude and he came to pick us up. He's like, how do you guys know Dohani? We're like, how do you know Dohani? He's like. Shout out Pierre, Pave. Yeah, yeah. Onkile. Nice. Wallani. Liège, Talk City. <laughs> <Nice>. Star <Flam. laughs> Um He, uh. He picked us up and we started talking. He's like, yeah, I picked that fool up on hitchhiking one day. And we're like, what the fuck? You know? And we ended up staying at this dude's house. Yeah. He grew some weed and we had weed to smoke and then he took it, you know? But like at a certain point we're out staying our welcome, mm -hmm. you know? His girl's like. And it's, <laughs> and it's, and it's like literally it's, win it's one of the coldest winters in Europe. Yeah. Right. The fucking canals are frozen. And so we're like, yeah, we're going to go to Amsterdam and fuck off. Yeah. Right. And we went to Amsterdam and we met, we fucked off, but we like, we met a lot of people. Yeah. You know, and we saw. Cause I had kept telling him for years about Amsterdam and then we were like, we're screwed. Right. We're literally a, a couple hour train ride to Amsterdam. Let's just, we didn't even have a plane ticket to go home for six months. Wow. Right. So we're like, you know what? Let's just 
throw well, we our could wad, change the ticket, but we sure. and then change our ticket and go home. Like uh-huh. you know, that was the it's plan, good, yeah. right? Like I mean, what? Like just spend. The, we have a few, few hundred bucks. Yeah. Take a train. Let's go party. Let's see Amsterdam. Right. And let's see. Let's see. You know, that was it. You're young. You don't. You just kind of roll the same. Yeah. It's you're just yeah, rolling. Well, I think we're not doing this thing. You know. And yeah. We met people, and I was like, dude, dude the Soma, weed, the weed, the weed could Soma be. Yeah, the like weed that. could be so much better. Well, we met Bon Guru. Oh, nice. Jim Spector. Yeah. yeah. Not not the not the one that's famous for just another Jim Spector, I think, the murderer. <laughs> the, right? yeah, the murderer. <laughs> yeah, 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 not that, that, not that guy. Not that dude. This dude's like a master, like flamenco fucking guitar player. He fucking nice. crushes it. He's, he's amazing. So he was with Gypsy Nirvana. So the, yeah. so we're leading into the. This is like IC canographic. This is yeah. no, this this before that. This is before, before that. even. This is wow. Seed Bay. Seed yeah. Bay. Wow. Wow. Seeds Direct and yep. and and Overgrown was the was Overgrown the was the other day. so mm-hmm. was the we met them and we were chatting we made friends and we met Soma and we you know we got to meet people you know yeah Row who owned the noon coffee shop um it was great you know we got to meet people in the culture over there right and I was like dude we can come over here and and kill it yeah and we went back or, or you know. Six months later, we made it to our our time. We ended up getting a job working for the Flying Pig Hostel just as like helpers, right? Wow. I met my wife at the Flying Fucking Pig Hostel. The one you're still married to. Yes. That's amazing. Yes. And we got and an apartment. We, we, yeah, apartment. we got an apartment yeah. from the from the Flying Pig because we were like the maintenance dudes who were fixing shit. And our girls were living, you know, my girl, Kim, my Kim, my, my wife, she, you know, we were living together in my apartment. She was already supposed to go back home wow. to Canada, right? And she stayed. And then we met other people. And then our time was up. And she stayed back. And we went back to California, hustled our asses off. So you could move there. So yeah, we could sold everything back. we owned. Sold everything. And then yeah. hustled everything yeah. we could. Nice. And, and my wife was my girlfriend at the time. She was still there. Yeah. Working. So we got back. And, like, you know, the money got put together. And we got a place. Yeah. And then, like, one of us didn't have a, we didn't have two bedrooms, you know? Like, it yeah. was, you know, we hustled, bro. We did From what the we ground had up. to do. Yeah. yeah. And it wasn't about, like, DNA. It mm-hmm. was about growing fucking some fire shit that they haven't seen. Right. But at, at first, we were growing New York City diesel because that's what. Soma's that's New York City diesel. Yeah. The, yeah, the so grapefruit. The, the good grapefruit one. Fina, yeah, the big, yeah. yeah, that, it's super it's loud. One. It burns super, your nose a little bit. It, it was get so, you high, it's not a diesel. Five, six dollars a gram, bro. Doesn't get you high, but it's super. You know, super fruity, super good flavor. Yeah. Doesn't really get you. I kind of like tangy and all those citrus. Yep. A lot of the citrusy ones, yep. unless they're like hazes, don't get you that high. I don't know. If I smoke tangy dabs, bro, I can't remember shit. It makes me stupid, dude. Tangy dabs. Like, I'll be calling. Dabs like, what am I supposed yeah. to do? Because I can't remember. I'm driving somewhere. I don't know. I like purple punch going. dabs. I don't like purple punch flour. The right. dabs are all right. Some yeah. flour, some, yeah, some some strains are like that. Yeah. Yeah. The flour is not what you want. So no, strawberry banana. You it's don't a big letdown. So we moved over there. We grew. Oh, organic living soil. Strawberry banana is some of the best flour you can smell. Maybe, but, but it might it's not give you that touch high. The fucking hash. That's no, what no, saying. for sure. Like, Absolutely. It's just certain strains. All right. So let's get back to this. So, so let's get back. Seeds to the direct. Yep. So we go. You know, we meet Gypsy Nirvana. We're hanging out with Bon Guru all the time. You know, and then we we move. We come back to Amsterdam. We get an apartment. And we start growing some New York City diesel and Gypsy's like, hey, you guys want to, can you do a seed crop for me? Mm-hmm. And we're like, okay, well. Leads into your. Leads you know, into my question about who's your daddy. Who's your daddy. Yeah, who's yeah. your daddy. And yes. we're like, sure, wh- what do you want us to do? You know, we'll do a seed crop instead of growing weed. We'll do a seed crop. Yeah. And he's like, well. He was going to pay us for the seeds. Yeah, he's going to pay us for the seeds. But we didn't know about, he was going to, we were going to come out with our company name. Right. Uh-huh. It was just about. Getting us to do a seed crop. So right. it turned out to be called Who's Your Daddy? It was like six different males with power plant females, right? That he gave out with every single order. So it was like 60,000 seeds. Yeah. So every single order, someone's getting three, six seeds, whatever. I think it was he was giving 10 packs, but whatever yeah. it was, every single person for like a year was yeah. getting these Got guys. Those who's seeds. your daddy? And they say, yeah. Who's your daddy on totally. him? And like it was. So cool. you guys still have packaging? Yeah, we still have the that's original, amazing. some original yeah, ones great. that he was giving out in the little zipper in. Wow, with the sticker, everything. Yeah, we still have some, but it was so that was. And Super he's like, nostalgic. "Well, you guys have to have a name for yourselves." And we're like, "What the fuck?" And our buddy who we met through Soma, through Soma and Alex. Yep, 
right? His yeah. Greek guy named Yorgos. And Yorgos. Who knows what's happening with Yorgos? We, he, he was, I don't know if he was on, we, he, maybe he was on mushrooms, but he was like, Cam's back. He's like, I got the perfect name for you guys. Your DNA. You're everything. You're in everything. You're in everything. You're everything. You are everything. You know? That's great. And I got the logo. And then he comes out and he's like DNA with the font and the logo with the seeds, the double helix with the seeds in the middle. Yeah. And that was our original logo that went out on every single freebie pack. That went. We'll have a lawsuit Gypsy next Nirvana. week from Yorgos's uh, right. company. Be like, oh, you admitted the to us. <laughs> uh, I never got paid for that logo. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. But that was a beautiful time, you know, like our yeah. first seed catalog was made by our buddy Brian, who was the fucking dude. Starter, he started Leafly. He started Leafly. Him and his two yeah. buddies You know, Leafly. and then got bought out, you know, and got a bunch of, you know, like, dude, like, it was an interesting time when we came out into the market. It was yeah. a very interesting time. We, we weren't the first Americans. Like, no, there was Adam Tony Sogamoth was American. Tony, yeah, right? for Somo's sure. American. Mm -hmm. uh, Adam Dunn was American. Absolutely. Right? Oh, yeah. and, and JJ from Advanced Nutrients. Yeah. Was American and he brought like the the bubble gum. I think he brought the bubble gum or Northern Lights or something. He, that's that was, a whole nother podcast. Yeah, yeah, that yeah that's sure. a good one. Yeah, there's you know? some old but, school. So like, yeah. we got to meet all these dudes and then we we did the seed crop and then after that seed crop we're growing weed again. Yeah, and you know then we started making our seeds. You know, mm -hmm. like. And started mixing Cali with Amsterdam and Cali with- That like, was your thing is bringing the American style yeah, genetics over there. Yeah, exactly. Well, because nobody had, like in Europe, nobody knew what OG Kush was. Right. So like we come over with this whole like OG, OG, yeah. and then you don't get no OG. It's all haze. You walk into the damn cream and they're selling OJ Kush. OJ, right. yeah. They OJ. spelled well, it wrong. Oh, bro, you spelled it wrong. I think so. So my belief on what happened over in Amsterdam with OG Kush is- People brought cuts over, people brought some seeds over, whatever. But what happened was in the selection process, when they did crosses, they selected for vigor and they just, you know, yield and vigor. They selected and OG away Kush from the OG. Yeah, yeah, they went totally. away from the OG. Totally. And it, Adam, you know, Adam, TH Seeds had OG, right? They had OG while we had OG. OG they got had screwed it, up for OG, years yeah. because of that. But their OG was, was MK Ultra. It was... OG crossed G13 or something yeah, like that. Yeah, his MK Ultra was legit. That was yeah. a good one. It was legit, but it wasn't like the OG we no, were No, it wasn't like it was the different. pine. Yeah, yeah it, it, was, right, it right. wasn't like It was fire. It was hell of fire, but. Yeah, there wasn't was gassy stuff for a while. You know, even during the OG phases over here, there wasn't yeah. a lot of good OG. Even we, we just, when we I was there in 2012, Cali, bro. Yeah. we had to bring Cali. Right. And then we wanted people to be able to buy seeds and then get First Cali. smoke the weed yeah. and then get the Cali experience. Because like- Bro, all those years I told you that I was going to Amsterdam, I would come back with seeds. Yeah. And you'd grow the seeds and it wasn't this what was on the package. Right. It wasn't, you would, never one time did you get anything that was better than what you were smoking at home. Right. right. And so it was like, wait a minute, that sucks. I took a risk. We did all this shit involved in this. And then in the end, you don't have anything that you want. Right. So now I'm going to be the one selling those seeds. Mm -hmm. Now, fuck that. We're going to give them something where they can buy one pack and get what's on the picture. Right. You know what I mean, yeah. that's the point. And First, go buy the weed yeah. at the coffee shops. Mm -hmm. Right. That was numero uno. Go buy the weed and then they're going to come. Right. They're going to see the weed and they'll be like, I want that. I want and then they, yeah. Are there yeah. seeds of this? Well, go yeah. see, go see, you know, the DNA boys, you know, and when they, they would come, come over to our shop and they'd be like, so do you guys have chocolate seeds? We're like, what the fuck is chocolate? Yeah. Yeah. We're like, what do you mean, chocolate? What the fuck is chocolate? Like, oh, we were just at the gray area, and we got some of this weed that they call chocolate. And we're like, oh, that's the D line. Yeah, that's that was one of my questions yeah. was how the D line turned into chocolate. I think that's gray, area. gray area. John you couldn't gray sell area. it as D line. You'd put it on the menu as D line, and nobody would fuck with it. Wow! But as soon as he called it chocolate, everybody wanted to fuck with it. Everyone wants chocolate. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Speaking of which, I crossed the chocolate to the banana skittles, and I did a couple other crosses, but I. Want to give you guys some <laughs> seeds? Um, I think oh, there's nice. going to be some amazing Thanks, stuff. Thanks, bro. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> we got more than that. <laughs> but yeah, no, I think, uh, you know, do a co-release on that or whatever. I think that would be cool. I, I like the chocolate. I like the Terps. Super cool. Good it's stuff. different than all it's the fruity different. stuff now and I mean, desserts. And all, it's, I think it's different. all that stuff that we were smoking 12 years ago yeah. is going to start coming back. Right, For I sure. think it, I think this fruity, purpley stage that Dessert. we're in, 
Yeah. Dessert, or they want to say exotic, but there's Candy, nothing. Candy, exotic, nothing, dessert. But yep. what, there's nothing exotic about it. They're, what, like, exotic, it's got some, like, some haze, some fucking South African, some Thai. There's, what, where is exotic? Right. Like, you didn't go to some exotic place to create the strain. So I would say it's just a name. You right. know? There's a lot of hype behind a lot of it. And some of it's good. I mean, but I think it's all about having variety, right? So yeah. we have a little bit of everything. Because everybody, you know, food, food, just like food, it's so subjective. Wow. What, what you like to drink, what you like to eat, what you like to smoke. Uh, you I know, think and that you, super you silver haze I just smoked was more exotic than some of those like runts, those rare. runts. But just like rare, rare, yeah. rare exotic. Yeah. Yeah, totally, rare exactly. Exotic because That's don't definitely see. exotic compared to the fruity ones. Yeah. But just like food, everyone can make spaghetti, bro. Yeah. It Absolutely. You know what I mean? Spaghetti Everyone can make spaghetti. It, it comes in a can. It yeah, <laughs> it, comes bro, it comes in a can. So here, we're so going yeah. like, to sell you. If you don't know how to make some spaghetti, we're uh -huh. going to sell you the ingredients in this bottle. All you got to do is spray it a few times. Right. It's just and the now point you is, is not everyone's a spaghetti chef. maker. Right. Just because they can make spaghetti. You know yeah. what I mean? And so that's kind of the difference. In I mean, we watched the bloom. We watched Spain. Yeah. Blow up. Blow up. Like we implode almost. We would listen. Is. We got our European medical cards mm -hmm. just so we could bring our own weed to Spain. Right. Right. When we were living in Amsterdam, because mm -hmm. like Spain's weed sucked, bro. Like this, like for the most part, you didn't want to touch anybody who was trying to hand you a nug, except for like a few. There's like a very few people in Spain, like five people. How was Soma's weed back in the day? Like, a, you know, when which you guys weed? first which got over, this, the, the grapefruit and some of those did like, there was the Soma A plus, which was the rock bud. That was one that we saw in the States. I never saw it in Europe, but in the States, that was some fire. Yeah. It was a seed that he put out. I never saw it in Europe. I remember either. Buddha's yeah. sister in oh, Europe yeah. and, and, uh, diesel, the diesel was the big one. But uh, to be honest, like, uh, well, the seed, I, I didn't smoke a lot of weed that Soma grew. Yeah. That's just, that's. Like right. just the stuff on his on his balcony on the summer stuff, but like yeah. I smoked a lot of stuff that he oversaw maybe mm -hmm. or like guided the people or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, or like, that he had or I'm not trying he to acquires be any, yeah. anything oh, yeah. negative, but I think it's more acquired. Sure. Well, he had his he grown. he know the yeah. good growers that could grow his strains good, and mm -hmm. right. you know, like he knows. I, good I wish it was. Totally. I wish it was ten totally. years ago, and I could just be passing out all these varieties and say, "Yo, just bring them back to me, dog." Yeah, and I'll, I'll distribute them. Those are the days. Yeah, I mean, those still it's the legal right. days is just have a distribution license. Yeah. When do you guys start winning cups? Two thousand and four. Two thousand four. Two thousand eight. Two thousand four. Two thousand four, 2004 till now. You guys, you guys have amassed a, to be, yeah. a ton. LA so, Confidential yeah, yeah. was our. It was third place. So LA Confidential was great. I remember growing that back in the day, and it had like more. The one we had had like orange, really bright orange hairs yeah. that it grew with. And it stacked really well. You get full colas and it was gassy, but it was unique. It wasn't like the cushions. It, it has was that earthy. It was super earthy. Earthy. Coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Strange, yeah. It, very strange, but really Dark, like good leathery. smoke. It would burn down to the roach. You could smoke it. And there yep. wasn't a lot of stuff that, at that time that you could smoke a whole joint of. You burn it down to the roach and you're like, oh, I could fire that roach up the next day and it's going to taste good. <clears throat> we, we did that the first day we got our shop. Wow. We smoked an LA Confidential joint in our shop and we went home and we get a call from our neighbor the police are breaking into your shop right now. They're saying hemp plantage, hemp plantage. Like literally, we don't have anything in this place. We yeah. just got the keys. Right? With the, the smell. Cooker. We were crescenting the, the, the place yeah. of the yeah. joint. And you know they I mean? like fucking it's... break into the shop. First, like we didn't even. <laughs> you guys were unpacked. Yeah. We're not even open. Like there yeah. was no seeds. There was nothing. Right. And they fucking are like, you know, they're calling like. Where you know your seeds are at the police station, uh, your keys are at the police station. No, the they rekeyed our shit, bro. That oh, night wow. though, the fucking the police officers on the phone. Oh, I'm like, bro, don't don't break in the shop. There's no there's no henna plantage. What are you talking about? My neighbors telling him, yeah, there's no henna plantage. What do you like? Chill, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. Just fall back for a second. No, rah, rah, rah. and he's telling me on the phone yeah. that he just fucked up my shit our shit right. and broke into our shop mm -hmm. and didn't find anything. And I'm like, yeah, dummy. Like, what do you think? Like, you know, you know the difference between the smell of a joint and a, and a 
a growing plant. No, they got a phone call and they're like, we got to go in there and yeah. deal with and this problem. I'm the yeah. one that had to go in yeah. the police station. And oh, I'm God. like, yo. Yeah. I was like, can I get the keys to our shop? Even though we already had the locksmith Change that changing shit. the locks and shit like that. And he's like, yo, you know, it, it sucks for you that we broke into your shop, basically. Uh, it was a call because it, it, it was a hemp plantage. And I go, we just smoked a joint. I go, is it illegal to smoke a joint in your shop? He's like, no, it just sucks that you, you know, it sucks for you. I go, so it's not illegal. I go, no. He, he goes, no. And I go, so it's okay for me to smoke a joint in my shop? He goes, absolutely. I go, so if you ever get a call about weed smell coming from my shop, please don't break in. Yeah. Please call. You know, right. We're not doing anything illegal. We're smoking joints. It's our shop, you know, mm-hmm. and we never had a problem ever again. Wow. Ever. Like, and our street, our street is a thoroughway between like a really big shopping street and the police station. So like, they're always walking down our street, like, and they yeah. would literally get to our, our window and just like, look, the other, like, dude, like, because we were chiefing, like, that's all we did. Right. We're in our shop. We're like, if we're not in the grow room, we're in the shop. Mm-hmm. Right. Or even if we, one of us is in the grow room, one of us is in the shop. Right. Yeah. So and that was cool back in the day, right? Is you'd go to the coffee shop and smoke the weed. You'd ask them where you can get the seeds. They'd tell you where, and if it was, let's say, Chocolope or LA, they'd come to our shop and then we'd show them a catalog. And most of the time, we had the weed of what we were selling the seeds of. So then right. hash. the idea would be smoke it first. Yeah. See if you like it. Well, here's a bong load. And that was so cool to have a store as an American in Europe. And then you see other tourists coming in from Sle- wherever they're from. Slee stack totes. Yeah. And giving know. them bong loads right there. And then it was just, it was a different time. You can't do that anymore in Amsterdam. Like we still, right. I was just there last week and, and, you know, I was smoking joints in the back of the shop, but not mm-hmm. in the front. And, you know, it's just different. Just different, different. five. The, next yeah. year will be our 20 year anniversary of having a store in Amsterdam, you guys. It's amazing. We're still in Amsterdam. So, like, yeah. and we're not going nowhere, even and, though it shit's changing. And we could smoke 24 7 in our neighborhood. They haven't changed the law like they have in the red light. Yeah. You know, they can't. can't you can't smoke in the, the red light? Yeah, no, no, it's, bro, it's wild. The same dude that called yeah. when we first smoked the joint 20 years ago yeah. helped us get insurance because we had to get this special insurance because wanted us to stay because we've been there 20 years next year. So, like we I got said. that. Yeah. And, yeah. Oh, yeah. And and he basically had our back and wrote a letter to the owner and all these different things because we've been such good tenants cuz in 20 sure. years we literally don't like we don't bother anyone. We For sure. might smell like weed a little bit. Right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like but we but, done, we've done we put in the carbon filter. We we, we know yeah. we, we we've improved completely. The property. I mean, we have like a fucking 1000 gallon fish tank with fucking fire eels that we got that were like babies. Yeah. And now they're fucking so big that they're dying. They're dying. Oh, wow. gotta get them out they're so that. big. They're yeah. like fucking softball size fucking bodies. Yeah. I mean, like it's, it's interesting. And you know, now, now we're back over here and we're still doing Europe thing. And yeah, you see, so you guys still got the Europe thing. Uh, you guys were working with Crockett. Yeah. You guys were partnering with Crockett for a while doing this stuff and yeah, we going on the cup circuit with Crockett too. That was yeah, always yeah, fun. That was cool. Everyone yeah. always had good weed. Yeah. Yeah. Those were the, you know, those were the circuit. That was good times. You're selling, yeah. selling seeds, you know, uh, DNA by Crockett. It was DNA by Crockett. DNA by Crockett. Tour. Yeah. For here in the yeah. States. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I, a long time before that, it was DNA CA, but that didn't, that stopped really quick. And yeah. then, but yeah, now I mean, it's just full on because now it's, it's full on. Like seeds yeah. are legal. Our seeds. So you and you still have your shop in Amsterdam. You guys still sell seeds in Amsterdam yep. Yep. and clothing hats. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. Good stuff. You got to make new ones, but like, yeah, yeah. I mean, your stuff is good, still relevant. Yeah, I mean, we you know we're putting out some new hits. Yeah, you know, bringing back some old. Like we have a chocolate crop that we're about to finish. Fem yeah. seed crop. We have, you know, strawberry banana we're about to finish. Right. We're bringing cantaloupe haze back. Oh, like nice. The originals. Cantaloupe right? haze is fire. Slee yeah. stacks coming back. You know, and wow. all you kids don't even know Slee stack. Motherfuckers, yeah. like three time legends of hash winter in Amsterdam before it was like 700 bucks a, a dinner, which yeah. is well worth it. I'm not talking smack. It's definitely yeah, yeah, worth yeah. it. You get a lot for it. But it, it was a different time. You know, it was like 30 people that got to go. And it yeah. was, right. you know what I mean? It was different. Totally. But, super, uh, super invitational. Super invitational. Bring that shit Smoking back. that crazy hash. But now yeah. it's cool. Yeah. The, the, like, the crazy to, hash bowls, bro. Evolved to what it is crazy now. Crazy hash bowls. Like, 
be glad yeah, you have Coca-Cola cool. around. Right. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, keep you alive. The hubbly right. bubbly. The yeah, hub- there was oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. One I mean, time the, only, bro. With like that Amsterdam yeah. is a you know, a uh, a great place, you yeah. know. And California is has proven to be very interesting also. It was you know, since they've changed the laws and stuff, like mm-hmm. very challenging for everyone. Yeah. And I mean, you guys have gone through your challenges, you know, as you've scaled, because you guys have scaled as far as seed companies in the United States. I think you guys have scaled the most more than anybody. So you guys have went through the most phases too. And, you know, I think difficult yeah. times, great times, first challenges. First seed company do a, to do a major licensing deal. Yeah. You know, with you guys were with, with canopy, canopy up in Canada and yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was that a big was, deal. I mean, that's a big deal for everybody. I don't We took I, a lot of shit for that. And then everybody that we took shit from yep. are all in like a legal play in Canada now. Right. You of course. Know? Of course. But somebody has to do it first. Yeah, of course. You know, someone has, you know, and Someone's yeah, there was Adam the Dunn and TH Seeds. He was doing his thing over there. But you guys were kind of the big guys from California really freaking hitting it hard over. Yeah, they had their hoodlum thing. Their hoodlum thing was, you know, I yeah. had a hoodlum. They were oh, dude, his, fuck, the bro. coat. Yeah, him yeah. and Doug with the coat, bro, the, the hood lamp, the hood lamp coat. Yeah. I still have mine. I still like it. It's thick. That thing it's heavy, bro. Like dude, that'll last my for the rest of my life as long as I don't get any bigger. Because I don't, it barely fits. <laughs> I remember now. He, his wife come into work. Yeah. In the rain wearing a hoodlum coat. And I'd be like, dude, that thing is like so heavy. Yeah. You know, like you gotta kick. <gasps> totally. It wait, but it'll protect you from that weather in Amsterdam. Oh yeah, for that Arctic weather and Dude, shit. That, yeah, that January, that cold December and January. Oh, oh. Don't miss that. Makes you walk fast though. Makes you ride your bike fast for sure. Yeah. So let's do it. Let's do a collab. I'm down with it. Cool. I'm sure Don down. Yeah, yeah. You know? We're for all sure. about that new shit. So, you know, all unity. about the new shit, right? So it's like constantly finding new flavors that fit. I think the market will stabilize and then there won't be the need for all these new crazy genetics as much. You know, I don't know. We'll see. I think I it's- think people see an easy, an easy lane and they try to just jump in it, whether it be like everybody became a DJ in the nineties or everybody, yeah. you know, is, is now on this thing. Now everybody's thinking they can make quick money being a seed company. It's yeah. legal. Cool. That's almost better for, companies like ours it yeah. kind of lets the the fat rise to the top without making a fat joke right because right. It, at the end it 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 does it, it makes you stand out what's your history what have you done what yeah. what quality are what you the, just what, yeah pollen chucking are you just making seeds of a bunch mm-hmm. of other people's gears or did you actually like i don't see you on google yeah have you done something you know and and if right. you and even if you haven't and you just make good stuff, that's also good. There's right. young breeders that are doing great Quality shit. is everything. And, and, there's, yeah. and yeah. there's guys that are up in the hills that have been doing it longer than we have that don't put their name For out sure. there, you know, that have created some some legendary shit, you know? And like, totally. yeah. like it's not, it, you could be, it's, you could do a quick, it's the quick business, right? Because now it's the mm-hmm. cool thing. They just classified seeds as seeds. You know, there's no... THC right. on them so that you can send it's considered them hemp. You can send yeah, them anywhere. Send them anywhere. Technically. Yeah. I mean, some places might stop it and, but yeah, I mean, there's like, phytosanitary issues, all that, but that, that's all changing too. Like, I mean, yeah, you know, you can send, you can send hemp seeds anywhere. We, we, even the, with we, phytosanitary certification. We had a, phyto, a, a phytosanitary certificate and sent seeds legally from Holland to Canada for the canopy deal. Yeah. Before it was a thing, like before you could even do it, like, <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. Is we were trying to get our feet sanitary oh, in yeah. Amsterdam mm-hmm. and there was like two and we people. couldn't, we, we couldn't get it. And the, and it all came down to, we had a guy working for us that ran everything for years. Who's, who was like our brother yeah. who, who was really linear, really did things by the book and really mm-hmm. was just like what me and Aaron needed. You know what I'm saying? We needed someone to keep us kind of on, on, ship. on the track. Right. Well, it got, he got to the point where the feet sanitary certificate in order to get it, you had to, provide a country of origin for mm-hmm. the seeds, right? Right. Okay. Can't well, do that in Amsterdam with well, the Netherlands, right? Yeah. Because you, you can't. can't. At the time, right. you could. there was no legal place on the planet to buy seeds right. or to obtain seeds. So the person at the office of the phytosanitary in the Netherlands uh, kept telling him in a nice way, like, just fucking fill it out. You know what I mean? Just whatever. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Sure. But, but he's so linear about it. And he's so just by the book and he's, he didn't get it to the point where dude goes, listen, if you want to, cause 
Cause our Meet guy was here. like, yeah. I'll come to your office. Cause I don't understand why this isn't possible. Right. Mm-hmm. And he goes, okay, meet me here at this time at blah, blah, blah. He shows up and it's a McDonald's parking lot. Wow. Right? And, and Pedro's like, what, you know, what do I do? I go, did you bring money? And he's like, yeah. I go, okay. Well, it's just, it's a, it's a classic payoff, bro. Dude <laughs> just wants you to fucking pay him off, you know, something to get right. like, whatever. It's like, just be ready for anything. You know what I'm saying? And that's what it was, minus the payoff. Dude didn't want any money. He just wanted to meet him to tell him, look, bro, you don't have to be all like wily about it. Just fill it out. Yeah. And I'm the one to stamp it. Right. So it's all good because he knows also there was no way for him to like, there's totally. no, it was like a catch 22 in the rules to where like you had to show up, come to your origin, but you either dry snitch on yourself, which you can't do because you can't make the seeds yourself. Right. And there was no legal function to buy them. But now you can buy them from all these different places. So, so at the time, we needed this paperwork to be able to do the deal with Canopy. And so right. we got it at a parking lot in, in McDonald's. Uh, wow. In, in McDonald's parking lot. Crazy. So, anyways. So let's talk about Tangi because Tangi had its reign. I feel like Tangi was on top for a good three, four years where it was like, you know, it actually OG, we'll take it even further back. Let's talk about OG 18 because that was kind of pre Tangi. Yeah. That you was know? like salary OG, like Kemi mm-hmm. variety. Yeah. Right. And I mean, I guess it was a hit with growers. Yeah. You know, all across the world. And then you, then that was like the OG era. Well, that right? was big in Amsterdam too. You could yeah, OG, big, OG 18 flower, right? Like everywhere. there was a period Crushed. where you could go, if you wanted OG, more than likely you were getting OG 18, even if yeah. it was called something else. You know, yeah, a lot of times. Sour diesel was, you know, like yeah, over yeah, in totally. Amsterdam, I saw that. Totally. So, I, you know, like, and then, uh, we had met Crockett, Dave, in in right around that that period of OG eighteen. Yeah, and we were going back and forth from California to Amsterdam, but Don and I, and we, um, Dave, like we met him through uh, Mark Haskell Smith, who wrote a couple books mm-hmm. and included us in his book. He was writing about us, and then he met Crockett on the plane. Yeah, and it yeah. it all came together and. And so Crockett's like, hey, I got something I want to give to you mm-hmm. when I see you up in San Francisco. I think we were selling selling shirts and shit like that yeah. uh, with Addison mm-hmm. up there at the Rosie the Riveter factory. Yeah. Uh, it was fucking, I remember that shit. And it was so, he's <laughs> like, here, you know? And I'm like, and I had my boy Sergio with me and we were, in 95, we were both bicycle messengers. Yeah. Right, slinging weed in downtown Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. Right, and some weed came into town. It was called Tangerine Dream, and it was like, wow! Right, the mm-hmm. nose on it, the high was okay, but the nose was like, it was like Calio, but on steroids. Yeah, because I remember Calio pre predating. Right, but that was like a sixteen weeker or something like that. Well, that was a long flowering. Yeah, we had variety. Calios that were short flowering. Yeah. that you squeeze them, you smell tangy. Mm-hmm. But then it goes to like old, nasty, like nothingness, you know? Like the real Calio smoked like tangy down to the road where it was like that full, like the one that we the got in the bay. The, the flavor. It was a flavor all the way. And it right. was like, yeah, this guy, Sean Alberts, used to grow the fucking most. Of, he used to either grow it or get it, but it was just, you know, that next level Calio. So like when he gave it to us, I was like, dude, I'm going to blow this shit out of the water, right? And then we started growing it and then we started extracting it. I was getting... I was getting all the tangy weed that was coming around, like just so you know, yeah. like back in the days. And it was some of it was going to extraction. And like the first dude doing extraction was like this dude Buddha. And this is all like bubble back in the day. No, right? this bubble was hash? fucking BHO. BHO. Oh wow. Whipped. Right. Yeah. And the shit was oh, the yeah, all loudest, that butter. The loudest shit. And it fucking just and it wasn't about the flower. Right. So, I mean, it was still a little bit about the flower, but it was more about the hash is it, it was like mm-hmm. in Europe it was about the flower and in America it's dabs time. Right. And you take this. And this is like 2008, maybe 2009. Uh, I don't even remember. I have no clue. It, it was, some, it something early. around back then. Yeah, I mean, Weezy they had BHO dabs, before Weezy then. Dabs was around Weezy. back then. You know? So like all that shit, like Tangi was just taking over everybody. It was crushing everything, dude. Yeah. And like to the point where we like, we branded it as, you know, as Crockett's Cut, you know, Tangy Crockett's Cut, mm-hmm. and created a brand yeah. for around our, it, yeah. around yeah. it, which turned out to be Crockett Family Farms. 
Right. And that was, that's how Dave. It won everything for a couple that's of years. That's how Dave it won everything. into the industry. Well, and it, it was, there was like the popularity of it aspect where people judging, it, there's no, it stands out. Yeah, you can't touch it. You know it. what I mean? It stands out because it stands out against everything else. They yeah. know that. So like, there's not only the fact that it's good weed grown properly, but it's like, oh yeah, super so unique. super That's unique. That's why Martian won. In, yeah, and in it's standing. It's, go, it's, it's going against all these other things that are almost the same. Yeah, yeah. It, and if you, like you said, Martian, Martian yeah. mean green, that's another one that we should bring back and go go hunting through the seeds, the original seeds. But like, the wow factor, right? There's yeah. like you walk into a room. And everything is kind of like, oh, the same. And then there's like this one yeah. that's like, wow. And then it like you smoke it and it like hits you mm -hmm. with the hammer. And and that was the Martian. I think that, you know, that hazy, earlier flowering haziness, you right. know, nine week, just be like dark green, like straight up. It, I would love to mm -hmm. see that shit in hash rosin. Yeah. Like, yeah. It didn't exist. Right. You know what I mean? And then like, yeah. There's we a lot were, of seeds. We were that taking we have. hot knives of that yeah. shit. Hot, gotta love hot knives. Yeah, I got. It's been a. It's, I swear we're gonna start doing hot knives again. It's been a topic of discussion the we last made little these bit with Marlon. Hot knives that were nice. Shit. I just used to take my parents' knives and heat them up. Oh, back you know? then we had a custom made thing made for us. It was like a bong with a percolator. And an open <laughs> you put bottom. water in it with an open Crazy. bottom, bro. Oh, and glass and knife. Yeah. Turk, and you, you, have you it, stick and the knife in after you, you, no, you press them two, together. Two, two glass rods. Yeah. And, and you have the perfect. little camping burner. Yeah. And when you press them together, you had this bong. Yeah. And you get this bong. massive smoke. We just <laughs> use the cardboard tubes. We were lazy. Oh, yeah. You'd roll oh, up yeah. a magazine or something. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 The, Dude, it's paper towel. I got so fucked up with that thing. We got got the bong on 420. I took a hit and curled up in the fucking corner of the couch in the in yeah. our shop, all fucked up. Like the police are coming. All I was all paranoid. paranoid. Oh yeah. no, that's I'll the clean worst. Clean up the place, bro. Clean oh. up the place. Yeah. Of course, <laughs> everything up. I'm like, what the fuck? Call up? my wife oh, to come man. pick me up. You know, like I'm all fucked up. So you mentioned Wheezy's name a couple minutes ago. Wheezy Dabs, bro. Wheezy Dabs. So do you guys remember the backstage at Slightly Stupid in maybe 2000? It was the most smoked out I've ever seen any backstage, but we were in Santa Cruz. It was Slightly Stupid. You guys were there. Wheezy was there. Marlon was there. Crockett was there. It was like yeah, a who's no. who of the cannabis industry. It there was, was a bunch of other people. There. Maybe you weren't there. You, you were, were definitely there. It was there. me and Serge. Yes. My buddy Serge. Totally. Wearing his Dodger shit and <laughs> yeah. Crockett. And I totally remember that. Yeah. And Serge got fucking thumped, bro. In the pit. Crazy. I remember yeah, that, that back his glasses, stage. his Dodger hat, he was all fucked up. You didn't need to smoke. You could just inhale the air and blow smoke out. Oh it was God. it was the most smoked out I've ever seen any backstage. That was fucking but, fun. Yeah, that was a long time fun, ago. Fun one, bro. Um, yeah, yeah, what a I trip. Mean, like, the industry's changed, you know, like, you know, it's not... It's not what it was. Right. You know, and a lot it's of- It's definitely evolved, but everything evolves. Disco evolves yeah. into what disco evolved into. We're like OGs of the industry. We're not fly by nights. Yeah, and we're still around. And it's tough to even be, I mean, it's tough enough just to be around, but a lot of OGs aren't around anymore. That's true. You know, and there's a lot of people, you know, you look at all the people that started and also partners. You look at partners, you guys are not the only partners left, but some of the, out of all the partner groups, you look at THCs, you look at me, you look at- you know, a lot of other guys yeah. and, you know, Doug and Adam are still on good terms or whatever, but a lot of guys just kind of went their own ways. Yeah. It's hard to work with people. It's hard to work with people. With yeah. I mean, I think some of those were forced evacuations. For sure. You know? For sure. Not necessarily like just leave the debt behind kind of things, which kind of mm -hmm. sucks, you know, like, but right. we've, we've stuck it out. We've had our ups and downs, you know, and like. Yeah. Well, it's, you guys are a good balance for each other for this sure. This is the end of the day. It all boils down to coming back to the seeds. Yeah. You know, the root of the fruit. The root of the fruit and about the quality. Yeah. yeah. And, and and doing it, you know, and and we're still here doing it, almost 50 years old, still doing it, still yeah. doing what we love, still we're smoking all getting older. Still smoking good weed. Homies, bro, that we're going to smoke the $1,000 an ounce. Oh, uh, shit. NorCal Nemo. All right. So how much is this joint? Is it this more joint, than one of those hash hole joints? So $100? this is probably like a three grammer. So you figure it's a, it's, you know, it's a like hundred dollar joint. Yeah. Ish. Crazy so it's, it's aged it. properly. Yeah. Please. So fucking who would have thought prices going up like this? I mean, there was expensive shit back in the day for sure. In LA, especially. Yeah, bro. They'd prepay 5,000 bucks a pound. Yeah. Prepaid. 
I know the dude who sold clones of OG for 10 racks, right? Had to buy a tray of clones for 10 racks. That's the way to do it, I guess. Well, that was, you know, how it got. One time. That's how it got got (laughs) spread around, right? Sure. That's how she got out because someone else is like, I'm going to sell two trays for 5,000. It's a race to the bottom at a certain point. It is. But at the same time, quality is going to dictate a lot. If you maintain quality, you're going to have longevity. I mean, there's, if you're in that, it used to be 1%, and now I think it's like 0.1%. <clears throat> but if you maintain that level of quality, you're always going to be successful, no matter yeah. what it is. No, the, the the super fire always sells, no matter what. I don't know about a $1,000 an ounce shit, but. I mean, there, if, DNA, there's a price but, point for everything for everybody, yeah, you know. So. I would love to get that, but. We yeah. just want everybody to grow their own. You this know? is the guava gas. The guava gas. Did you roll that or was it? I rolled that. You know, I rolled it with the last bit of flour. My friends hooked me up. So do you smoke your joints all the way to the thing or do you like you? It's like I'm best. like almost halfway, right around halfway. I'm, it. I, yeah. I, I throw it into the ashtray. Yeah. So I'm, depending on what it is. So, so like if it's candy and it tastes one. good all the way to the roach, I might fire it back up the next day if I know it's going to. Like this right. guava gas, I'll probably smoke it down to the roach. But it just depends. I mean, like when I'm going through pheno hunts, I want to make sure I get down past like the first half inch to inch, even if it's not that great. Because sometimes stuff gets better the more you smoke it. Right. Um, I, I mean, like I can't tell you how many times like at cannabis cups I've gotten some great fucking great weed, great looking weed. Yeah. But then you take the first hit off of it and you're like, yeah, damn, I would want to throw this fucking joint out on the five. Totally. You know, just because it looks good and it looks good on Instagram doesn't mean it's good shit. No. And we were talking about that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) People holding on, holding. All right. So look, breeding. Let's just, I mean, like, I'm glad we're having this little round table conversation, you know? For sure. People who hold on to multiple cuts, like a fiend, multiple phenos of the same strain. Right. And they call it the same thing, but they have like one, two, three, four, five. Right. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about that? Like, cause I know it, it in Amsterdam, they used, we would only so, have one Fino, right? That was our selective Fino. Everything that was else, your selection, right? We killed everything off. And then we, but like, we would have, we would. It wasn't like ever like, Oh, you got Fino A and but, oh, you're yeah. my tight homie. So you but get there was, the fucking one. But like, I mean, we used age. to not give the best one out. We'd keep the best one for ourselves and then give the second best one or the third best yeah, one. We wouldn't have a second or people. third best one. We would only keep the one. Yeah. We wouldn't keep multiples. Well, and it's like, so we were talking about wedding cake as, as an example where there was like the JBZ selection that was the fucking the best wedding cake that was real bready and gassy and checked all the boxes. Right. You, you know, yielded fairly well and it was super photogenic and smoke good. But then he sold seeds of it and so the seeds got spread out everywhere. Oh, so and so there's 30 different phenos right. of what people think is called the right. same thing. Yeah, they think yeah, it, yeah. that's what it is. And really, what in my mind is the best one, you know? Yeah. So. We like to find the pheno that we like, and then we like to self that pheno most of the time. Right. Right. Unless it herms. And, well, well, we yeah, don't keep then it. Then you wouldn't herms. it. Then well, you wouldn't. Never keep it's it. It's never herms. part of it. Yeah. I mean, calling out that stuff, but I think like nowadays, I, I agree now with that. Now you have to look. Now, now you, you got to look through everything. Look I mean, the thing is, is sure like you get herms. some really exciting stuff that herms, though. There's some exciting genetics. Yeah, but you can't If you want to work with it, but you can breed that out to a degree. It's just, I. I used to be exactly Depends like, on when it herms. so the funny thing is, is when I started out in the industry with the whole seed thing, I was against feminized seeds and I was like, that's the devil. Feminized seeds are bad. It's ruining the genetic fucking line. We all think that before we, we, and then, the and then feminized, we get knowledge. I did that with feminized. Yeah. I did that with feminized. And then I did it with autoflower. And I'm like, autoflower sucks. I never grow autoflower. I don't yeah. stand behind that stuff. But then once you get into autoflower and you see, it's like, fuck dude, it, it serves a purpose. Totally. It has value, and it, you know if they're good genetics, they're good genetics. Where would James Loud be right now? Yeah, if he didn't do feminized seeds and he just made regular seeds, we wouldn't have this spot here. We no, wouldn't be doing wouldn't. this podcast. You know, and that, it, I mean, but that's how it was, right? There, yeah. when when Arion and because Arion, Arion was the first one, I think, with the feminized seeds. 
Right, because I remember Adam you know, I was think like Dutch Trixie. Passion had yeah, Adam Dutch, and Passion. Dutch Passion. Yeah. Hank was like one. Of, I mean, yeah, it, Hank was definitely so right one in of the that first same ones. time, right? right? But all all around the same time, and, yeah. Yep. Everyone and kind we of were figured doing it regular out. seeds, and like we were be like they're like, come on, mate, make fucking feminized seeds, and we're like, nah, bro, you know that's just you know, but and then we did it, and then that's all you really sell. Yeah. Right. Over mm -hmm. since fem since we started selling feminized seeds, that's all you know. And then the thing, Everything. like with autoflower, obviously they need to be fem because for the most part, when I'm doing them, besides retail, the majority of the bread and butter is actually going to farms where they grow an acre, yeah. two acres, right. three acres. You can't do that with reg seeds. Nah. No. So Even and it just takes a you step. Can if you it, no, you can't do it with regular seeds. You can't. No. You know, but I've I've sold reg seeds and I got an order from someone in Mexico that wanted me to make a fucking 20 dudes, 20 pounds of reg seeds for them to get started. And then they were just going to have labor pull out all the males. And it's like, dude, that's just, it's such a short window and you'll miss a lot of stuff. I was going to say, it's they just, think they're going to get them possible. all and it's, they're not. Even if you have cheap labor, it's not reality, right? You can so, still run through the field and mark the winners yeah. that still get pollinated and just Keep some Hermes. Oh, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. What's like, your ideal pheno hunt size? Speaking of, of oh, which, I mean, dude, of it's, marking stuff. It's varied, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, what happens if you don't have a lot of the seeds that are left? Sure. The ones that, you know, you gave away for free and they said, hey, bro, those things are fucking amazing. Those freebies. I know all about that. are amazing. Yeah. But it comes down to the selection either way. You know? So it doesn't matter. If you have a thousand plants or you, you have, have 10. 10 plants, if. Your selection, it's like music. You can write, you can play music all you want. You can make songs all you want. But if you don't have a song that resonates with other people, it doesn't fucking mean shit. Absolutely. It's just you in there playing a fucking song. And Everyone then it, and then it boils out. down to uh -huh. the person so who's growing it. with selection, it. Right. though. But, but that's what I'm getting to back to the selection part is like, if you know what you're doing with selection, you're going to find something great. Mm -hmm. You don't need a thousand to find. If the right. seed stock that you're going through is, is you know, is good, right? Yeah. If you only have a few seeds of something because it's that's all the seeds there are, mm -hmm. then you select with what you have. But we did selections in Arizona on, you know, a thousand uh, uh, seeds of each string, yeah. right? And we did a selection and we ended up with 11 it's plants. Copper State. Yeah. Copper State, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did another selection in Columbia that we just finished last year. That was a selection on 18,000 seeds. Right. And we ended up with, I think, 10 <sighs> or 12 plants. So in the end, it's good to do those, but most of those selections, like in Columbia, they weren't about, oh, what is the fire is shit? You're looking for outliers. Like, you're looking for things that can deal with the conditions sure. for the mold. For well, they're the, going to die the off. Things. Anything that doesn't yeah. is going to die off. Yeah, it's and that small the list of what's left, then that's what you're pulling from as right. far as your selection. right? Yeah. So it's a different kind of selection. Mm -hmm. Whereas in Canada, when we did the selection with Canopy, they, when they were just tweed, they were trying to find... They wanted chocolate. They wanted kosher. They wanted the strains that we're already selling. In so Europe. they wanted you to Don't find a find something find that something. we already found. Yeah. So now you're doing Go, selection on the original seeds, but yeah. now you're going, okay, Aaron. All right, bro. We're going for chocolate. He's like, all right, Don. We're going for kosher. So you, you might find something better than chocolate, but right. you, that's not what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. you're, you're not looking for something that's that's more this way or more that. You're looking for chocolate. And so, then and, then and that's actually it's so much more difficult than people understand, too. bro. It's it's. I, I mean, getting it's like getting yeah, a twin. Look, I roll of one of your children, coffee, bro. I see you know the what I mean? coffee, if you think, bro. and I'm like, that's selection. Yeah. When I see the coffee, mm -hmm. it's we ran or we did a whole film over there, and it was all about selection right. and like. Between every plant, you're smelling coffee, but to break you your clear fucking the palate. Clear totally. the palate. Yeah. But the funny thing about like, you could find one that looks right, but then you got to dry it and smoke it. And then it's like, fuck, that's totally different. Yeah. Yeah. But, but you guys have done a lot of breeding with actual S1s. Like if you say it's an S1, typically it's an S1. It's an S1. Yeah. Yeah. You got a Tangy and it says S1. Like, But the old Amsterdam model was, I got train wreck, but I crossed it with White Widow to make the train wreck. Everything's crossed with Or White critical. Widow. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I mean, no, we don't play that shit. No, and you guys never did. still the model. We don't play that shit. That's still today because White Widow is like it's not. It's stable. It just, so it's it, stable. It produces a lot of a pollen. shit ton of pollen, right? right? And the window, the pollen and, window is really long with and White it's Widow. It's not yeah. so terpy. But, it doesn't really take away from whatever you. Right. Put it's it very to. vanilla. Yes. It bastardizes very vanilla. So everything you. It cross totally. It with, if bro. anything's like here and you cross with White Widow, the it's terps half. are going to be half, well, right? I mean, look, but it'll still have similar. But like OG Kush with White Widow was the most trash seed that I ever fucking grew. And I bought them from a couple different people because I was like OG Kush seeds. You know, I've re I've made OG Kush seeds in yeah. the past using actual OG right. Kush on different OGs. 
and there's a lot of recessive problems with recessive yeah, things coming down. out. Yeah, and that watered it down completely to where it was something unrecognizable to most people coming from California that got good weed. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah, don't touch the OG. I mean, like, yeah, we but, like, but to we've find seen it. the white white widow cross to everything. I mean, like, yeah. we even have a white widow. We have white widow chocolate, and it's just a fucking chunky ass good white chocolate. I like. So there was you know a I mean? white widow that I did like though. We had one in in Cali that was like musky, and it was super strong. It called the sweat, and it would make you sweat. And that was like okay. ninety seven. We had super silver haze, and we had the sweat. Around like the ni- late nineties, the sweat they called it the sweat, but it was White Widow. It was a was you know nor- of the White Northern Widow. California thing. Yeah, I think so. Okay, I think so. Yeah, it was grown. I think in Richmond, Richmond, California, they were growing it and pumping out packs. And it was what you smoke it. It didn't have a ceiling. You smoke more, you get more high. You just keep getting more high. Just super silver haze, right? So the, the stronger flowering or the stronger fucking smoking varieties. Yeah, I mean, sometimes I don't, I don't mind if I didn't we find some haze just recently somewhere. We where, have the, where was the A five haze is fire? I haven't no, seen but that. Someone in a while. gave. A, I just remember. I feel like I just had some haze. What's your opinion on this uh, NorCal Nemo? It's good. It's, it's strong. It's, it's strong. Hungry. Definitely strong. It's I not taste as it. terpy as like the Skittles. No, but you They're feel Skittles it. Like, like we just like oh, yeah. we all had. Didn't we we smoked. The, I this. smoked the Nemo Skittles, right? Right. And you smoked the Nemo Skittles, yeah. right? You rolled the. That was terpy. Yeah. Yeah, that was nice. That was nice. Yeah, but I mean. Uh, how do you put that price on there? I don't know. I mean, it's good weed. Props yeah, to the, it's props fucking to amazing, the grower, right? It's fucking amazing growers, weed. I mean, but yeah. like, yeah. I mean, you got to have the what makes it amazing? Super high end clientele. <sighs> the clientele. Yeah. <laughs> the, there it is. You know, and you know, I mean, but I'm I'm happy for those kind of things because I feel like it's good for the whole industry with the industry that the prices dropped so much. Then you hit these things where it's like, okay, well. So yeah. prices should come back a little bit for artisan t- style things, right? Like on an artisanal level, people yeah, should be willing to pay more frosty, for frosty, some super tasty, some hand trimmed. Yeah, like or some deserve, twelve week deserve sour that. diesel. So you know, like I should, you to should our more. distro, we're bringing that to you. And what's up? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right. Why don't we get in the sixteen hundred dollar ounces? <laughs> Seriously, you know. Come on, they're man. Get, are you well, you're down in LA. Bucks an ounce and you're not getting no. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. The LA just, market. Just, it's 1800 I think. Oh, my God. 1800 an ounce. No, but that was the Skittles. Like, and, and that, I think, we had like a, When we ounce. had our old grow in LA, yeah. like we grew Skittles would come into the rotation when they would be tall enough right. to make it into the rotation. So you'd miss like two crops before mm-hmm. it can make it into the rotation. You miss two <laughs> chances so it can veg. Right. But great weed. Mm-hmm. Great tasting, great pain in the ass to grow. Yeah. Is that why would it, it's expensive? I mean, it's slow. Sure, as, I think that's also why right. it's, dude, I mean, although my other buddy, dude, the guys from SF Canada, they make it yield like three pounds per light. So, but I think there's different phenos of it too. In Amsterdam, so it's all they told rarity. us our, our indica was only worth four dollars a gram because it flowered in eight weeks. Yeah, I mean, but That's over in Amsterdam, people want to like have a, ways to talk you down anyway. So it's always like we laugh with us. Bust we'll, your balls. We'll take our weed and go, bro. Yeah, good. yeah. You know, and Arion's like, no, no, no. I remember yeah. that it was Arion trying to. Well, that's a good one. Is Aaron and I finally had some packs. Yeah. Right, of our own shit. Not over, of Soma, over the, overseas. Not, like, Amsterdam. Yeah. Not of Soma's diesel. Right. We had LA. Cantaloupe Haze, LA, uh, 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 OG Chocolate Thai. Yeah. And one other one, Hash Plant Shark's Haze. Or Shark's, Shark's, Breath. Shark's Breath. Yeah, Shark's yeah. Breath. Okay. So we brought all of them in. To the greenhouse. Well, this is like our own weed, our yeah. own strains. Like we're fucking proud and we're like. We have a meeting. All right. We have a meeting lined up, you know, in the red light to go upstairs, blah, blah, blah. So totally. first we go to the counter, to the counter mm-hmm. and we look at the most expensive weed they have. Yeah. Right. Buy a gram. Oh, we smashed this shit. All this weed that we're bringing him is better than the most expensive like weed that they have. $12 a gram. 12 then? bucks a yeah. gram. So it's six bucks. A, now I want 6,000 a kilo now. Six, right. half, six bucks. So we go upstairs back when. It, up, who was upstairs? Arion, Franco, Olaf. Yeah. But they were all upstairs in that little fucking Yoa. office. Right. Yoa. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yoa. Shout out yep. to all the homies too, by totally. the way. Because yeah. they're all fucking. But 
Ariane looks at it doing his typical, you know, he's a businessman, bro. He knows how to hustle and he knows Absolutely. how to, and he's Dutch, bro. And so, and he's in Dutch. There's he was an old more, saying, he there's, was more Dutch back then. That, yeah. Even more. There's an old saying, if you're not Dutch, you don't get much. And that goes for everything when you're an American in Holland. So just, that right. was just something that you knew. So right. he looks at the weed. Oh yeah. For, what is this power plant? And me and him are like, bro, we just spent, like, we have no money. His wife's feeding us dinner, bro, because we literally, we need to sell this weed to, like, get whole again. You know what I mean? Right. And this motherfucker just said it's power plant. Like, <laughs> fuck you, bro. Talking, Give me, talking shit. Talking shit, yeah. but in his own little trying to, not, yeah. you know, I don't like you kind of way, in a more like, I'm trying to price down or get 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 some sort of different deal, right? Mm -hmm. And and Frank is going through the can of, he's like, Whoa. Frank was like, nah, bro. Nah, like, you're no. We're fucking taking this shit, homie. Like, <laughs> and just, and, <laughs> and in all the years, you know, Franco and Ari and Ada, he doesn't overstep and blah, blah. And at this moment, he's yeah. like, we're not, we're, we're not losing this. We're not losing this fucking weed. And the, the guys feel some kind of way because we're all friends, bro. And now right. you're like, you're calling my stuff trash. Like, you just called my gourmet fucking caviar fucking McDonald's, dog. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, that's crazy. And then they're like, okay, we'll take it. And so that was for us. That was not only was it a stamp, but we had four strains on the menu at Greenhouse Coffee Shop yeah. before we had anything. Bro, no one, I, to this day, I don't know any other company other than Greenhouse that has had four strains on the menu at the same exact time. Cookies. And, now, but back in the day, Shout no out cookies. You yeah, did, but, like, but back in the day, what this about gray area? It was like the gray area was everything was on the menu was from us one time, bro. Like, nice. yeah, yeah, no, no, and gray but, area was the other place to get gray area was an American. Yeah. John, yeah, was John was an American, and so sure. he was. We used to buy eighths in in Ziploc bags from yeah. the gray area, right? Right. This was going to like the premier coffee shop in Amsterdam, mm -hmm. getting the numbers and then getting it on the menu as what it was. Yeah, like we still have a menu of that yeah. somewhere. You know what I mean? Because it's that, amazing. When we sold our wheat to dairy, deal. Barney's, yeah. it mm -hmm. would never end up as it would get renamed. Yeah. It would get renamed. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah. Red he Dragon. Was, was everything like, got renamed. Smart, yeah. bro. But John didn't rename the shit. No, Ariane didn't rename the shit when it came through. When John had American customers specifically going there to get American weed, people from New York going to get Cali weed or yeah. whatever. You know what I mean? Like yeah. going, they were strain hunting like the flower. We had a great run sure. with. Gray area, John, John, solid, solid. You know, like that was, yeah. it was and good. still, bro, we still have. We saw from John back when then. we were doing, yeah. when I was just there, like two or three months. That ago. That shop is still hella busy, still all the hella time. Busy. Oh, still yeah. closed at eight o'clock, and I was just there last week. Like I said, still, still closes. Eight yeah, but like we have, I'm hanging out with my friend Danny D, who's freaking the Stones yeah. Cafe, Stones Cafe for Stones. years, and then it's, it's now evolved into a million different things, and who knows what the fucking the actual real title is for everything but yeah. these are friends that we've had for 20 years that are in the you know totally. max and and all the homies from Hata, like, benji you know what i mean all the and shops this was our like we were talking about it actually when we were at the shop this last time last week i was with danny and i'm yeah. like danny remember the time there was like a, a few year time period and we could say this now because it's over where there was a lot of because pata had their store on like our street went here. Right. Pata's store was here. You had to walk through here. Our store was there. And Danny's shop was hmm. in the red light right here. So you'd have yeah. to pass. And it was like, I'm like, how many clones do you think we sold? How many pounds? All, how for, many yeah, kilos? But, but we were like, we were, we were like beyond the weed part. We were like, just, just the amount of boxes yeah. that came through between his shop, my shop and your shop and blah, blah, blah. And, blah. and like, we had like, Bro, just that alone. You can't even walk with a box in the center of Amsterdam without getting searched anymore, bro. Yeah. Like, it's not even a normal thing. You can't, like, it's it's crazy different. And we were talking about, we are like, bro, that was such a different time because yeah. you were just, anyway, it was fun. That was, it was, those were the days. Awesome. It was good. It was good. Amsterdam was good. It was good. It was good. And it's good not to be there now because Amsterdam yeah, yeah. has changed. Right. And so what are you guys doing today? We're you making guys seeds, bro, and fire ass <laughs> genetics and nice. new shit and- we went for like four years without making anything new. The, the industry was in these weird things. Everything was strange and DNA wasn't the same as it was before. And now No, and you back. guys were like going Canada, uh, Colombia, US, uh, Europe. You're hitting grew it. too big. There yeah, was you, you guys of... scaled too big and now you've scaled it back. Yes. Yep. And Aaron and I are back in the trenches where we belong. Nice. Doing what we're the best at. You yeah. know what I mean? We're, yeah. about to, we're about to rebuild our whole website mm -hmm. and do that whole thing. and. We're but it creating, starts with the we're genetics. Creating, we're creating It'll seeds. We're bringing uh -huh. like the strawberry bananas back. We're bringing like the 24Ks back. So you're we're going for washers. Yeah, 24Ks, great. 
The, yeah, all yeah. the bangers from before plus new shit. Actually, we got like sour garlic, the sour Gilroy. Right? Yeah, yeah. Which is, the 24K which is I like better than Tangy. I and mean, Tangy was cool. It's It tasted amazing, but like the 24K actually hit you. It was more round. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it was more round. It, it, it got some cushion to it. It had, had a some hand, little hammer. Yeah, yep. some different a flavor. Hammer. Yeah, totally. Dude, like, you know, and we're, we're able to crack some seeds, you know? Mm-hmm. We're not going through a lot of seeds because right. we're keeping it small and, and fresh, but we're like, we're going through seeds. Yeah, you know, and we trying just, to trying to find new th- new old things. Like we've yeah we've created so many. We feel like the whole time in Amsterdam when you were buying seeds from our shop, we were giving you freebies, right? Right, and some of those freebies were hits within people, but we never cre- recreated those seeds. Yeah. We can go through some of those seeds. We yep. can go through some because we have stock of all that still. We still That's have we saved all. we saved it all, and then it's just germination rates, right? And like I'm thinking, like, oh, well, we, we can do embryo some. rescue. The now yeah, there's, yeah, there's, there's you know, Justin about. does it. Exactly. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Is just in, in case we need to, we do embryo rescue. We soak the seeds. We do embryo rescue. Yeah, and and hopefully the seed cracks in you know in vitro. Yeah, right. You know, and because there's a lot of genetics that we haven't tried hash rosin with. We haven't. You know, it's right. old. It, it wasn't it had being its tested run. for that at the time. Well, and yeah. we have so much stock of like. Like we were going to do a, a line of, of seeds of countries that don't exist anymore yeah. that we have in our stock of, in our vault of just wow. all these different countries that aren't even countries anymore, but they're like seeds from those countries. Yeah. You know right, I mean? right. They're just parts of it's the not, world. It's, you it's know? not always interesting growing those land race varieties. Right. I don't always, I got to be honest. Like I grew like for six, seven years, I grew land race varieties every summer. Yeah. Outside. And I have seeds of some of those crossed with stuff, but like for the majority, none of them really, really like, wow. Right. This is special. Like, like why I'm like, why did I waste my time? Yeah. Right. More. I was more like, why did I waste my time growing this? Because it's not so, there's no real wow factor. To no, it. you got to do the Simon AK 47 route where you breed a true F1 with getting land race and fucking putting the and work in like that. And then that's and, how and I think it could be, you it'd find be more rewarding. Hoping uh, you find line breeding like that, then it, yeah. I mean, you want going some from Ghana, that you, F one to like stabilizing. You it. want to crack some Ghana gold cross tangy seeds? I think yeah. I have some. Like yeah. I didn't, yeah. I didn't really enjoy the Ghana gold, but no. yeah, you know, like I, I have the seeds. Right. Like you know, well, there are value those. in those seeds, right? Like yeah, I mean, you never the, know potential what you're breeding find. potential. You don't know. You don't ever know what you're gonna find. I haven't cracked them. I made them. Yeah. I haven't cracked them. I don't know what I'm going to find. I didn't really dig the Ghana, but I kept it alive yep. and put tangy pollen on it. Right. So, I mean, look, we love the game just as much to you, just as much totally. as you do, brother. You know what I'm saying? We row in the same boat. Yeah. You know, the plant is, is what, what got us probably everything. Yeah. Literally. The reason we're here today is because, you know, He's and that's, plant. it crosses so him. many. Yeah, exactly. It brought us all together, right? Yeah. It's like, it brought me to him. We were in Amsterdam around a big trim table. I'm complaining that we have too much weed to trim. Mm-hmm. One of the trimmers says I could bring my roommate. I've been married to her for 17 years. We have three kids. Amazing. Right? If I didn't have too much weed to trim, I wouldn't know my wife. Right. Like, it's, it's, you can't just, it's not coincidence. There's none of these bullshit. It's literally just a part of our life. And yeah. every single thing good. And I've been to jail a few times because of it too. A lot of bad things happen because of it too. I mean, look, right. it's an, it's, it's a, 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 a cut that cuts both ways, right? Mm-hmm. It, it's not, it's good and bad. But at the end of the day, we're still here. Yeah. And everything great has come from it. Yeah, I wonder we, how many, I mean, how many sure. growers have married trimmers? A lot. Dude, like there's for percentage. There's definitely there, an I'm, actual I'm percentage. Okay, all right, all right, all right. But let's, let's, let's just, let's just put a disclaimer <laughs> out there. Right. No, 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 let's just put a disclaimer out here. The, the most people watching this podcast right now. Right have a, 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 a an idea of what a typical trimmer is. Right. Right. That's some wook from the fucking mountains in-, in Sure. A, a, okay, it's not the Amsterdam trimmer and what no. you're thinking of is totally different, all right? So <laughs> that, that, that's bad or anybody- No, but, he, be, but, but his wife's beautiful. Right. He, met, he met his it's wife. It's not like- He met his wife trimming. She wasn't was the all- grant, like as- She wasn't a trimmer grant and, right. and it not wasn't like- Not that that's like, bad, yeah. Not that it's bad, but totally. it wasn't like I was like- Praying on my trimmers or something like that. It was more like it wasn't like, like we're in Europe, bro. And we got too much yeah. weed, weed to trim, and this chick's roommate can come over, and nice. she was a dope ass chick, and she yeah. still is. 
And I got three wonderful kids because of it. And I still love her more than I did the first day I met her, bro. Wow. And that's the real. That's what's up. And that's what's cool. That's what we all have in common, right? Yep. I've known your wife since I've known you as well. Right. Right? She's always been around. Aaron, we started the conversation off with, I met my wife at the hostel, right? So yep. like, like, you know, we're family men. Totally. You know what it's I'm saying? just and one it's less like thing you have to evolution. worry about. I mean, yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah, when you got someone in your corner, I mean, all that stuff is important. It's more than less to worry about, bro. Yeah. It's like support, like people oh, it's that the don't support have level. that, yeah. mm -hmm. and people that don't have, let's say, the 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 that support that you're saying, right? Bro, I feel bad for that man because yeah. there's there's some dark times in life that if you don't have somebody that's got your back, it's in a lot that more way, difficult. Bro, it makes things makes yeah. things difficult, bro. Yeah. That's all. Totally. Doesn't mean you can't get through it. For sure. Same with having good friends too and everything. It's oh, all yeah. I mean, it's, it's a, yeah. Having good combo. friends and family and people you can talk to. I mean, all those things are great. It's a combo. Yeah. Good weed. Good weed will help yeah. most situations. Well, look, any of that that you just described this, without weed this yeah. sucks. Hey, you right. know what I mean? Totally. So, like, yeah. This motherfucker saved me from three letters. Nice. <laughs> and we're still friends. And we're still friends. <laughs> and our families are friends. And, you know, yeah. we don't go on family vacations or anything. Yeah. But like. Yet. You know, no, but it's just like it's it's we're, it's blood. We're still a slave. Blood, we're still right. slaves to the plant, right? Right. Hard. Yeah. Well, when you believe in it, it, it makes going to work and having to work and like going to work doing work at home too. But like working, it makes working more enjoyable yeah. when you're doing what you love. Yeah. We a lot of times we've talked about it a couple of times on my show about your 18 year old self and your 82 year old self or your 80 year old self. The only people you need to worry about impressing. So at the end of the day, I feel like my 18-year-old self, 100% would be like, thumbs up, Super good fun. job. Yeah. We'll see about the 80-year-old self, but I think we're we're all going in the right direction. Yeah. 30 years away. Amen on that one. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Well, thank you guys for coming on hey. the show today, man. It's been great, dude. Thank Always you for having us, brother. brother. Definitely, dude. Thank you for having us. Yeah, man. Thank you very you much. Know, we want to support, too. Yeah, dude. I really appreciate the support. Make sure you look out for the James Loud collab. Hell yeah. Let's do it. With DNA genetics. Yeah, we'll do some D-line. We'll call it the D-line again. No, we'll just put it in parentheses. <laughs> like, Chocolope, ch a.k.a. D-line. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, well, we got to figure out what pheno it is. And, you know, I think there's some work to be done. Yeah. But yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited Well, like about I said, stuff. we have the original Chocolope. We're almost done with the seed crop of that right now as well. So, it's awesome. you know, however we want to do it. Yeah. Let's just, let's get in the lab and... Let's, let's do, play. Yes, you do. got your lab here. We can play with our lab. You yeah. know, you can give us pollen. We give you pollen. For sure. You know, I'm all about it. We we're freezing pollen too, so we're going to be doing some fucking cryo, cryo freezing. freezing. Yeah. Oh shit. But yeah, so where can they find you guys if they're looking for you? You got Instagram. You got your website. Yep. Yeah. I'm. I'm going to post your uh, personal phone numbers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my, yeah. I think right. you have copies of our passports. <laughs> right. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. Totally. Seriously. No, Hilarious. That's an inside thing. That's a whole yeah. other story. Yeah. 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 You, you can find us on Instagram. Don't get fooled by all the other DNA genetics that pop up on your feed. When you're looking for us, it's DNA underscore genetics with the blue check mark. Uh, that we, have we didn't Twitter, pay for. DNA genetics. Right. Uh, we have our DNA genetic shop yep. is how you get our seeds in the Dots, states. DNA yep. genetics. If you're shop. visiting Amsterdam, yep. you can go get the shop, get a hat, get a shirt. Yeah, yeah go to the store. Seeds, maybe say smoke hi to some Rally, weed. Say hi to zoo. Yeah. Yep. You know, you won't. They won't smoke you out, but they'll. They've sell been there you for shit. a long time now. Yeah, they're family. At this we point. try to keep everybody, you know, like we don't need to exchange people. You know what I'm saying? For like, sure. People are good to us. We're good to them. Yeah. You know. In it for the long haul. Yeah. With the, the big vision. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Just needed less people. Totally. Yeah. Right on, guys. Right on, bro. Thank you. James Loud Genetics, thank you.